Good morning and welcome to Litmus Test. Last time we looked at some two-dimensional crystals and today I've decided we're going to look at three-dimensional crystals. You'll see some random stuff off in the back and that's for next week's video. Next week? I hope it's not another week. This took a little bit of time and there is the Memorial Day weekend so point is, here we go. We're going to start off by looking at these 3D crystals with a very familiar example, table salt. Table salt, or sodium chloride, NaCl, has this sort of structure. You'll notice it kind of looks like a 3D checkerboard. There's red and blue, and they appear to be taking up alternating spaces. All right, so we've got red atoms and blue atoms, which represent the sodium and chlorine. It doesn't really matter which is which, because you can imagine if we switched the red and the blue around, that its structure would kind of look the same, just from a different angle, so to speak. Today's challenge is going to be figure out what crystal structure is this. And to do that, we're going to talk about brevet lattices. Brevet lattices are the 14 different ways we can arrange atoms in three dimensions. And they're named after some guy, Brevet, who came up with the different ways of doing it. There are, of course, a lot of nuances and variations on these, but there's sort of seven basic crystal structures, and then a bunch of variations on them make us up the 14 basic brevet lattices. So, with that said, let's start by taking a quick tour of Crystal Island right here, and we'll look at the cubics. On the left, we have the primitive cubic, in the middle the body-centered cubic, and on the right, the face-centered cubic. These are the most basic and straightforward of all crystals, and so they're the best ones to start with. The primitive cubic is just a cube with atoms in the corners, and the body-centered cubic is the same thing, but, well, with storms. So many storms. The body-centered cubic is the same thing, but it's just got an atom right in the middle. The face-centered cubic has atoms on all six of the faces, but no atom in the middle. To show you this, we'll take a quick look around. You can see that, indeed, there are atoms all over the place, all over the faces of our face-centered cubic. Both body-centered and face-centered cubics are very, very efficient ways of packing atoms together, and so there are a lot of crystals, both crystal crystals and metals, which are also types of crystals. There are a lot of these substances that pack in this way. Because they're cubes, you'll note that all three sides are the same length. In crystals, we usually say that this is A, this is B, and this is C. And you'll notice that all three angles are the same. They're all at 90 degrees. We say that this angle is alpha, this angle is beta, and this angle is gamma. We'll talk about these as we go on. Next up are these sort of rectangular shapes, tetragonal and orthorhombic. Notice that they both have the same, they both look the same from this angle. They're both this sort of rectangle shape here. Um, but if you look at the top, you'll notice that the tetragonal has a square top. So A and B are the same. C, the height, is different, and all the angles are 90 degrees. On the orthorhombic, you can almost tell from this angle that not only is it a little bit higher than the cubic, but it's also a little bit stretched backward compared to the tetragonal. From a different angle, you can see this a little better, that now the orthorhombic extends beyond the tetragonal in four uh, length, and uh, that's orthorhombic. It has three different side lengths, A, B, and C, and they're all different, but all of the angles are the same. Tetragonal and orthorhombic have two variations, well, uh, more than two. Between them, four variations, I should say, like the cubic series. We have body-centered tetragonal, which has this atom right in the middle, but again, it's the same tetragonal shape, so A and B are the same, C is different, and all the angles are 90 degrees. Compare that to the orthorhombics. In the orthorhombics, all three angles are different, for, sorry, all three sides are different, but all three angles are the same. We have the base-centered orthorhombic on the left, and body on the right, and face on the far right. The base-centered orthorhombic has atoms basically in the top and the bottom, the bases. Body-centered orthorhombic has an atom in the middle, and face-centered orthorhombic has, like we saw before, atoms on all six of the faces. Notice that stacking an atom in the middle here of the base-centered, like if we wanted to have base and body-centered orthorhombic, or stacking an extra atom in the middle 
here to have body and face centered orthorhombic would actually just change the system to be a different crystal system, something that doesn't have 90 degree angles. So far, all the things we've looked at do have 90 degree angles, but there are crystals that do and crystals that don't. You may be familiar with some crystals around your home that have 90 degree angles that are cubic and squarish, but you're probably also familiar with crystals around your home, or maybe just in general, that are different completely, like quartz, which is hexagonal. There are two variations on hexagonal, the rhombic and the true hexagonal. From above, you can see that these are, at least in Minecraft, as close to hexagons as we're going to get. You'll notice that I've only filled in the lattice of like one-third of the hexagon. So I've only filled in the lattice here, and indeed, even in the hexagonal crystals, these are the main points. These are the lattice points right here on the edges, not all six. That's kind of weird, but if you look at this, I can draw a hexagon by taking three of these rhomba shapes and putting them together like that. So the main difference between the rhombic variant and the true hexagonal variant is the height. For both of them, A and B are the same. You'll notice that this side and this side are at least as good as you can get in Minecraft, roughly the same length. In the rhombic variation, this side is a square, so the height is the same as A and B. A, B, and C are all the same height. Alpha and beta, of course, are 90 degrees, and gamma is 120 degrees because it's a hexagon. In the true hexagonal variant, it's a little bit taller, and so this side is a rectangle. C is taller than A and B, and it's not they're, they're not all the same length. Now we come back to this last little row, and we look at the clinic series. The clinic series are our last three Rebay lattices, and they are all crystals that have angles different than 90 degrees. On the left, we have monoclinic, and on the right, we have base-centered monoclinic. So the same thing, but with two atoms in top and bottom. The monoclinic, you'll notice, has some 90 degree angles. The top um, bit here, that's a square. So 90 degree there, but from the side, you'll notice that this angle, the um, alpha and beta angles, are not 90 degrees. They're something else. The best way to think of monoclinic is to think of the orthorhombic, which is where you have 90 degrees, lots of rectangles, all three sides are different lengths. Think of that, but then take the top and shove it over, like we've done here. And just shove that top one over a bit. And that's monoclinic. Now this monoclinic isn't a perfect monoclinic, because these two atoms shouldn't line up in monoclinic. Uh, if they did, we'd just have regular orthorhombic. So imagine that this is a little bit off, or just look at this monoclinic. In this monoclinic, the base-centered version, you'll notice that the atoms don't line up, and we have an extra atom in the top and bottom of the base. Once again, the top and uh, this rectangle shape, so it's got the 90 degree angles, but A, B, and C are all different lengths, and alpha and beta, even though gamma is 90 degrees, alpha and beta are not 90 degrees. Finally, we come to the triclinic. The triclinic has three different side lengths and three different angles. So from nowhere does it look like a square or rectangle. It's got three different lengths along that direction, this direction, and upward. Notice how it's a little bit flat. And from any direction we look at it, it has this parallelogram shape, or rhombus shape. So this sort of thing has a very low symmetry, but there are plenty of crystals that crystallize in this pattern. Plenty of proteins, for example, will take this sort of shape because proteins are really big and it's hard to have a much more organized shape. But there are plenty of other crystals around that have seen, you know, that have lattices that we've seen here. You note that pyrite, fool's gold, has a lattice that is somewhat cubic. If you ever look at, if you have some lying around house, or if you just go look at pictures, you'll see that pyrite crystallizes into these beautiful little golden cubes. And we know again that quartz crystallizes in hexagonal uh, variants, um, and a lot of metals crystallize in this hexagonal pattern as well. We don't usually think of metals as crystals because they don't look like the pictures of crystals that we see but metals do crystallize in, well, crystals. Remember that a crystal is just any repeating periodic arrangement of atoms. 
So as long as the atoms are repeating and periodic, it's a crystal. Compare this to glass, which is the stuff we're looking at all over the place. Glass is amorphous. It's not a crystal, and the atoms don't repeat. It does have the same two elements. Most glass is just silicon and oxygen, sometimes with iron or boron or what have you. But it's amorphous, and the atoms don't occur, occur in a repeating pattern, not even in a triclinic pattern. So with all that said, let's come back to our original question and come back to table salt. What lattice is table salt? It has this repeating shape, so we know it's a crystal. It's got a bunch of 90 degree angles. See if we can figure out where the lattice points are, and then figure out what the lattice structure is. It's one of the 14 we looked at. So that's all for today. 14 crystal structures. Every atom in a repeating and periodic fashion is organized into one of these structures, and anything that's a crystal, metal, or you know, crystal crystal, occurs in one of these structures. See if you can figure out what table salt is, and next week we'll talk about defects and imperfections in crystals. So, until next time, stay safe, and don't catch on fire.